2023 has been a busy but interesting year on the film front and as I'm unlikely to ever have another year quite like this one I thought it was a good time just before Christmas to have a look back over it. The year started for me with a few 4K discs imported from Germany and America and in terms of the 4K discs I've watched this year, Blowout proved to be one of the highlights but there have been many others and I plan to cover those next week. Early in the new year we had the announcement from the British Film Institute that the Christopher Nolan 1570 IMAX prints housed at the BFI IMAX were going to be screened in the run up to the release of Oppenheimer. This meant I could finally see Tenet as it should be seen and so at the end of February it was off to London to that glass palace with its 85 foot wide screen and the ultimate image quality that is only possible from a genuine 1570 IMAX print. And with regard to Tenet in 1570 IMAX I consider that presentation to be the best quality I've ever seen which was not a particular surprise to me as the 4K disc had indicated that it would be. However, Dunkirk may match it, but I'll come back to that shortly. While in London to see Tenet, I'd arranged a demonstration in the Bloomsbury branch of Richer Sounds to evaluate the Optoma UHZ50 video projector. We were finally approaching the point of modifying our home cinema, but our Optoma UHD 550X was too big to hang from the ceiling where a projector would have to go. The UHZ50 was impressive, and being of comparatively diminutive size, it was therefore purchased ready for the time when the home cinema could finally be completed. Dunkirk in March was a revelation at the BFI IMAX. I had seen the preview that went out with the Star Wars Rogue One 1570 blow-up prints many years before and that was sensational enough but the entire film was, well, something else altogether. Astounding. It wasn't only the perfect image quality on the huge screen though, the sound added almost as much. It was the same with Tenet the previous month and having been to the BFI IMAX many times down the years, I could tell something had been changed. This was because the amplifiers had all been upgraded and what a difference this has proved to be. A wonderful cinema visit and along with Tenet, one of the best I've ever experienced. But even better was to come the following month. At the end of April, Mark Williams and I resurrected the British Film Collectors Convention with a smaller event in Chorleywood. Simon Nichols was a new recruit for this and just prior to the BFCC, I visited Simon to see his fabulous home cinema. I'm sure many of us would happily spend a long time in here watching films given the chance. It's got the sort of atmosphere that is no longer present in modern black box studios across the country, but thankfully some enthusiasts such as Simon are keeping the memory of cinema in its heyday alive and well with their own cinemas in miniature at home. Simon has a semi-portable 35mm projector which hadn't seen much use over his years of ownership and so we thought we should check it out to see if it would be viable for the upcoming convention. It was immediately obvious it was more than up to the task. As a result Simon put some impressive 35mm shows together for the BFCC which concluded with a reel from Crimson Tide which just happens to be my favourite submarine film of all time. We showed Super 8, 35mm and 4K video on the convention's 24 foot wide screen that day and it was great to get everyone back together. Just a week prior to the BFCC we were back to the BFI IMAX for Interstellar. We had seen the very same print there in 2014 and that screening had been a sellout. Here we were almost 10 years later and it was a sellout again. In 2014 I considered this particular film to be the greatest cinema experience I'd ever had even though I was sat in the front row far right seat, the last seat available. This time we were sat right at the back and despite the vastly different views it was evident that my original opinion of Interstellar at the BFI IMAX was correct. This was indeed the most impactive cinema screening I'd ever attended and now I'd done it twice. If you ever get the chance to see this historic film in 1570 IMAX, don't miss it. 
Not all genuine IMAX houses will have a sound system comparable to the BFI IMAX of course, but nevertheless it should still be a special occasion. In July we were in Leicester to check out the proposed venue for another convention that came about as a result of the BFCC in April. This was to be known as Film is Fabulous. While there in Leicester and wandering through the city centre, a rather large branch of HMV presented itself and all I can say is that if you're ever in the Leicester area, you've got to make a beeline for this great store. It has two large floors of music, video and some other collectibles. A couple of weeks later and Andy and Dave set about modifying our house a little to create the changes and the design we come up with for our home cinema. Dave was on site for most of the work and everything we requested was carried out better than we could have wished for. Just as he completed everything the Empire neon sign appeared and so he stopped packing away and set about putting that into place. It was the finishing touch but Andy wanted to completely re-plaster the back wall so that everything would look as perfect as possible prior to us choosing a suitable colour. In the end we opted for a dark red similar to that we'd had in our previous home cinema for 20 years. Enlarging the screen to about 10 feet wide necessitated extending the top and bottom masking but this made it just too heavy for the existing curtain motor solution to cope with and would require some rethinking in order to automate the bottom mask. Something that has now been solved so stay with me until the end of this video. Towards the end of July Oppenheimer was released around the world, a true cinematic event the like of which we haven't seen for a very long time. Large film formats used to be the ultimate in cinema going but now here we were in 2023 with a box office blockbuster that was shot largely in IMAX 1570mm, the biggest film format of them all. And word had spread as to exactly why this format was so special, with the result that people wanted to see the results with their own eyes. There were only 29 cinemas around the world capable of screening the 1570 prints, but fortunately two of them are in central London, with a third in Manchester. We were therefore back to the BFI IMAX, but we had to wait a while because I was hoping to visit the projection booth and record the chief, Michael Ford, threading that glorious print into the enormous IMAX GT projector. It was worth the wait and made the whole day at the IMAX even more special than it already was. I know I keep saying it but if you haven't seen these true IMAX 1570 films in 1570 IMAX then you haven't really seen them at all. Oppenheimer is a drama so not the sort of all-out action or adventure of Christopher Nolan's previous three films but it is still a special experience. A couple of weeks later and I was ready to shoot a tour video of the completed home cinema. It's a lovely room to sit in and watch movies and we're usually in here three or four times a week. Shortly after the home cinema was finished we picked up our new 35mm projector, a Kinaton FP20 from Noel Pratt whom you will have seen in 2022 and a tour video I did of his home cinema. But shortly after getting it back from Noel's I then recorded a video to show how this Kinaton was laced up following some training by Noel. I haven't had much opportunity to use it since and still have much work to do to get it installed permanently and correctly but that's all part of the fun of having a home cinema. These things are never entirely finished. Trevor from Double Bill Movies came over in October and we did a bit of a spoof opening to a joint video which had some people thinking that they clicked on the wrong thumbnail. We had a good time together and enjoyed the new Criterion 4K release of Martin Scorsese's After Hours. Will it make the top 10 in my list for 2023? You'll have to wait and see. The Film is Fabulous event went ahead at the Phoenix Cinema and Arts Centre in Leicester and I had the job of filling the huge cinema screen with a Super 8 scope show. Simon Nichols once again handled the 35mm shows and if you want to see more from this Chris Ball has uploaded his video of the day which shows quite a lot of yours truly at work. I'll leave the link to Chris's video in the description below. Mark Stuckey was a special guest at Film is Fabulous. Mark is one of the clever chaps in the BBC programme The Repair Shop and as I come up with a possible solution to automate the bottom masking in our home cinema but couldn't fathom out how to hook it all up I presented it to Mark over breakfast as we all stayed in the same hotel. Sorry Mark, 
However, the upshot is that it was no problem for Mark and he soon had it working and back to me. I showed the masking working in my last video, the 4K cult films release of Django, but here it is. It's a pair of linear motors connected to a remote control and it's proving to be absolutely perfect. I just wish I'd found this solution many years ago. So that was a fitting ending for a year of filmic adventures. I hope to get the final video of the year out next week. That will be a look back at the 4K year with some Blu-rays as well, perhaps. So until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and perhaps consider subscribing. So I'll be encouraged to carry on creating similar content to this in future. Until the next video, wherever you are in the world, have a very Merry Christmas and bye bye for now.